If life on Earth is to be sustained, we must do more than just slow deforestation. We must reverse it. Creating a new generation of restored forests fit for the needs of the 21st century provides an opportunity to restore the natural balance between us and our environment. While we can never replace a pristine rainforest once it's gone, we can restore most of the economic and environmental functions it originally provided. And crucially, that includes locking up carbon. 21st century forests offer a huge potential to mitigate climate change while transforming the lives of millions of people around the world. Today, this potential is already becoming a reality. This is Kielder Forest in the north of England. It's a new forest. Over 65,000 hectares were created in just over 50 years. The forest produces over 2,000 cubic metres of sustainable timber every working day, providing 5% of the United Kingdom's entire softwood needs. Increasing biodiversity is a key part of the management plan here. Every year half a million visitors come to walk, cycle, ride horses or relax beside Kielder Water and enjoy the area's scenery and wildlife, bringing further economic benefits to the local community. And the forest captures over 70,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide every year. But it wasn't always like this. Well, prior to the large-scale afforestation of this uh, area, which began in 1926 and continued for the next uh, 30, 40 years, uh, done, of course, by the Forestry Commission, uh, these hills would be grazed by sheep and by cattle. There would be some ancient woodland uh, in the valley bottoms. Uh, we've sought to preserve and to look after that. But the initial planting was uh, monoculture. It was mainly um, commercial conifers. That has now changed, driven by forest design plans and a, a, a more enlightened view of how the forest should look. So we're planting more native broadleaves. We're seeking still to preserve these ancient woodlands that we, that we had initially. Uh, and that has led to a more attractive forest, both for wildlife and conservation, and indeed for the public. Some countries have recognised the benefits of forest restoration for many years, and have put a lot of effort into recreating the resources they once enjoyed. So science and good practice, one from many decades of practical experience, does exist. We can draw on this experience by creating and managing truly sustainable forests. The Shinyanga region of northern Tanzania was once covered with dense acacia scrub and miombo woodland. When large blocks were felled to cultivate cash crops and help eradicate the tsetse fly, the forests that once provided feed for livestock in the dry season, firewood and other essential products, virtually disappeared. By the 1980s, the government declared the area a desert. In 1985, a soil conservation programme was set up and the Hashi project was born. You see, this Hashi project was a learning process. It was not an easy project to establish. At the beginning, we started with the tree planting and we thought that the tree planting was the, was the right approach to address the problem of land degradation, severe soil erosion. After some years, we, we evaluated our efforts and we came to learn that we, have achieved, we had achieved very little. And one of the reasons is that we didn't involve the local community. So through that learning, we had to devise the approach. We involved the local community, we started the participatory approach. And through this participatory approach, that is where we came to learn that there are other practices, traditional practices like in the Ngitiri practice, which is, has, had been, has been practiced by the local community for years. Ngitiri is a traditional land use management by the Sukuma people. And uh, this 
whereby the local people will set aside a piece of land to allow it to regenerate, especially from during the onset of the rain season. This piece of land will be used during the the, 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 the peak of the dry season when fodder supply is difficult. Unaweza ukafanya mambo ya ujenzi wa nyumba. Ukakata nguzo, ukajengea nyumba. Unaweza, mana miti ina kazi nyingi. Unaweza ukawa kuna mti mmoja unaluhusu kwenda kuchimba, mtu waka utumia kunyu, waka pona. Daiza imekua faida ngapi? Faida tatu. Faida ya ini, upande wa biashara sinaweza ikatokea mle mle kwenye miti kundi watu wanaenda wakaenda wakachuma wakauza akajipatia fedha kwa hiyo amekuwa na faida ya ine ndio nazo nazo zifahamu people of shinyanga are accruing benefits which are equivalent to 14 US dollars per month unlike the 8.5 US dollars per month for from other rural areas of the country so you can guess how much the the Ngetiri is benefiting the local community of Shinyang Asante ndugu mtaalam nafikiri kijiji cha Busongo kimenufaika kwa mambo mengi katika kitiri ya Busongo cha kwanza kimeweza kujenga majengo ya shule kimejenga kama majengo manne nyumba za madarasa mbili na nyumba ya mwalimu na nyumba za mwalimu mbili moja imeisha na ya pili iko kwenye size ya lenta faida ya pili ni kuni wakati mradi huu haujaanza kulikuwa na tatizo la kuni lakini kwa sasa hivi wananchi wanafaidika na kuni na mambo mengine kama ya ujenzi kuchukua nguzo miamba ya mikokoteni yao na mambo mengine 20 years after the hashi project began the results are dramatic and clear around half a million hectares of woodland forest has been restored across 850 villages benefiting almost two and a half million people A well that used to be empty in the dry season is now full throughout the year. And instead of spending four hours a day collecting fuel wood, it now takes the villagers just 20 minutes. Today, the children of Shinyanga not only go to school, some even go on to university. China has long experience of forest restoration, having developed some pioneering restoration programs. However, despite tree planting and a logging ban since the late 1970s, 75% of the forests in the watershed of the Mayun Reservoir, which provides drinking water for Beijing's 17 million people, were badly depleted. Many of the local residents are poor, especially compared to their neighbors in the city, and couldn't reap the full benefits of the resources on their doorstep. With the encouragement of the State Forestry Administration of China, the IUCN is working with the Beijing Forestry Society to show people how their forests can be managed. The forest areas would be much smaller. Um, it was not until the 80s and 90s that people start paying attention to restricting, uh, protecting the forest, restri restricting loggings. In that sense, it increased the uh, forest coverage substantially, but at the same time, communities are not having equal access to the forest resources they would normally have, and that's not helping their livelihood. <laughs> Gotha 
正长着树，正长着，它一麻三就砍掉了，就一麻三不再是留树的，只可是去烧柴。过去都不贫困嘛。So in the last couple of years, two years, that we came in to do this project and trying to deliver, trying to manage the forest in a more natural way, restore the forest in a more economic way because we're using the natural regeneration rather than planting new trees. From the project started, we started to train the trees, choose the trees, the trees, the trees, the trees, the trees. After the trees, the people have a sense of their heart. 基本一个理念，就什么树种该可以留，什么树种可以去掉，啊，对对，这林分类型啊，它分辨比较特别清楚了。山货是多是多，是采的少。往回说是，你要是想弄的，可是呃特别费劲。他也不砍柴了，不那什么了，药材也有了，这是丰富的资源，还有蘑菇。可是，呃，特别费劲。现在我们说，现在你就说是，就说这些个人吧，到山上去把他这个东西全都整理一下。就是咱们这林子也大了，丰盛了，里头说实了，呃，这是老百姓的这富裕之路也多了。So we see that if we can manage forests in a more natural way, an active management rather than putting just focus on restricted logging quotas, uh, it will deliver multiple benefits to the community, to the forest, but most important of all, it provides better ecosystem services, not just for this area, but for the 70 million people in the Beijing city. Although these success stories span three continents, with different cultures, economies and environments, they all share key features critical to their success. Each one has restored a forest on a grand scale. Each one has replaced the original forest functions and benefits. Each aims to be sustainably managed. And all of them involve local people at the heart of the process. Our consumption of the Earth's oil, coal and gas has undoubtedly damaged our precious environment. The loss and degradation of our forests has been just as destructive. But there is good news. We can replace much of what we've lost. The Global Partnership on Forest Landscape Restoration commissioned a study to chart out the Forest Restoration Challenge. The green areas show where the opportunities lie. These range from broad-scale forests right through to scattered mosaic woodland. Much of this land is agricultural and will stay that way. But many of these areas could still benefit from restoration projects that suit local needs. Over one billion hectares of land could benefit from some form of restoration, to the benefit of billions of people. But this process is not happening fast enough or on anywhere near the scale that's needed. The scale of opportunity is huge. We know how to do it. We know where we could do it. The burning question is, when will we do it?